Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Mike Warshawski and I'm about to show you my nighttime skincare routine. Let's get ready for bed. By the way, you may be wondering, what the heck is this robe? Well, a friend of mine who makes these personalized robes made this for me as a joke. He saw my scrubs, he's like, I'm gonna make you the same thing, but in robe form. I said, well, if I wear a white coat in the hospital, I might as well white robe when I do my nighttime routine. My skin takes an absolute beating when I'm in the hospital, when I'm playing sports, I'm outdoors. It dries out, especially as I get older. No one likes to admit that, but being 31 years old, I'm starting to see more dryness, more flaking. This is a, a wall beard trimmer. And for me, I like to have my facial hair cut quite short, especially when I'm going on television or I'm seeing patients. Today, it's kind of a little bit longer. And why I do it at night, this is really interesting, is because I like for it to grow out a little bit in the morning so I don't look completely baby-faced. It gives you like a little bit of scruff. I like that this trimmer has very fine edges here so it picks up even the small hairs. And then even though I don't shave, I do use a bronze shaver <laughs> to get the little areas underneath here just to clean up so you don't look messy. Keep it simple and then I hit the cleansing gel. Step one. Get the face nice and wet with a little water. <clears throat> Get a little two pump action in there. I'm also not a fan of showering at night unless I just went to the gym. I like to shower in the morning so I can get the hair care routine going. Look, when it comes to cleansers, I try not to be that picky. Um, do be careful though, if you're using a cleanser that is exfoliating in nature, you're not using that every day or even twice a day because uh, exfoliators can actually do damage if you use them too often. So be careful with that. Now I'm clean and a little pink and a little red and a little shiny, but that's okay. Hydration time. You know, being a family medicine doctor, we actually have training in dermatology because a lot of what we do is screening and catching problems early so you understand skin cancer and skin protection. That's why we're so vigilant about putting SPF on. But at the same time, it allows me to spot marketing gimmicks. So when a company comes in and says they're the next greatest thing, I can look at the science behind that and find out whether it truly makes sense or not. I will say there's a lot of uh, lies on the market nowadays. So I try and use really simple products in order to make it less complicated. Next up, I use my Murad Hydrating Cream for the under eye area, where I clearly need the most help on. <laughs> I also like it for the eyelids. A lot of people comment on my YouTube videos that they think I'm wearing eye makeup, like some kind of orange tone. Nope, that's just uh, 10 years of medical education showing themselves on my eyes. So I'm hoping Murad can help me out with that. The reason why our eyes look different colors sometimes, or at least our eyelids or under eye area, a lot has to do with A, the circulation in that area. So you have a lot of tiny blood vessels that actually see are seen through the skin. And as a result, you get interesting colors, blue sometimes, sometimes pink, red, orange. Um, also really important is where the light is coming from will also decide how bad these shadows look. For example, the reason why people use fillers in their under eye area in order to improve bags or darkness underneath their eyes is because it pushes the area forward and there's less reflection of that light, less reflection of those small blood vessels underneath the eyes, therefore decreasing the darkness. You know, over the last 10 years, I've had certain problems with my skin. Um, and when I was in medical school, I didn't really care that much about it because I was so buried in books or maybe spending very limited time with my friends. Now that I'm spending time talking to you at home or going on television, I need to be careful about my skin because I want to look presentable. And I've tried to take more and more steps in learning about products that are out there, speaking to dermatologists. In fact, a good friend of mine, Dr. Bonasali, is one of the best dermatologists right here, right by my home. And I always ping him if I have any any questions or if we get into little arguments about certain skincare routines it's fun in the medical community to nerd out and talk about these subjects so we did skincare but now we got to do mouth care now as a doctor obviously I'm gonna tell you brushing your teeth twice a day flossing is really important but there's also a few other things that I do floss I got my glide 
uh, floss right here with a little minty taste. I think it's called Cool Mint, yummy. Um, I also have specific toothpaste that I've been using recently because I've been having some issues with bleeding gums, probably stress-related. A lot of people don't make the connection that your overall health, your overall well-being can actually show itself on your gums. So for me, being stressed out, I've been using a little uh, Peridontax for my bleeding gums. And then this is kind of a, a cool hack to share with you guys. If you're sleeping at night and you have a stuffy nose, whether it's due to illness, allergies, uh, and you can't breathe through your nose, you breathe through your mouth. And as a result, you develop horrible dry mouth. You wake up feeling not so great. So for me, if that ever happens to me, I use like a dry mouth spray just like this. And you give yourself a few pumps before you go to bed and you wake up and your mouth is still well lubricated. It basically works through osmosis, like it doesn't get absorbed, so it keeps pulling moisture out so that you're never fully dehydrated uh, in the oral cavity. For my toothbrush, I use a Philips Sonicare Diamond brush. Uh, I really like this because it has a timer built it into it, meaning that it'll vibrate every 20 seconds. So you do one section, then you go to the other section, then the other section, and it really makes sure that you follow it. When I use a manual toothbrush, I get lazy and I'm like, all right, it's time for me to go to bed. Um, so I, I like sticking with this guy here. Make sure after you brush your teeth, you also do a little tongue scraping action. Yeah, it helps improve your breath quality. And if you're going to bed with a partner, you probably want to do that. So you can't talk about a good nighttime routine without talking about how to fall asleep better because you wanna be getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep if you're an adult. And for me, the way that I do that is I really try and pre-plan that whole process. What does that mean? Making sure that the room is really cool so that my body temperature can drop and make me feel sleepy. Well, I have the air conditioner on, usually set to about 66 degrees. Everyone's gonna have their own range, but for me, I like to keep it really cool. I also have a special cooling mattress from 8sleep that I use that allows me to sleep cool throughout the night. And it actually warms up throughout the night. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm not cold and I can feel ready to get up and start my day. I also have my humidifier running and I don't wake up with a dry nose or dry mouth. I never like that sensation. I wanna keep my sleep as sort of my sanctuary. And I think that's one of the most under-focused areas of people's health that we haven't talked about enough. Like we talk about diet, we talk about exercise, we talk about mental health, but not enough about sleep. And sleep is where you recover, your memory improves, your hormonal balances shift. And if we put a little bit more focus into that, you're gonna see some tremendous outcomes. We talked about cool, but now we need to talk about dark. And I actually am so strict with this that I have two sets of blackout shades. I have the ones that go down, and then I realize that there's still a sliver of light that comes in that ends up filling the room. So I got curtains that and drapes that I actually pull closed as well. There's been some research showing that even if there's like a candle flickering on the side, it can potentially disrupt your sleep. And for me, being a somewhat anxious individual, if I even get woken up for a short time in the middle of the night, it's hard to fall back asleep. So I do everything in my power to try and sleep as long as I can, whenever I get the chance to at least. For those like me who battle with sweaty armpits throughout the day, a really cool hack is to use an antiperspirant the night before when your body's cooler so it can actually work on plugging the pores in your armpits earlier. Uh, when you apply it in the morning, first thing in the morning, your body temperature may be warmer, you may be sweating already, so it won't be as effective. Remember, the goal of stopping armpit BO, that kind of smell, is really about decreasing the sweat or killing the bacteria there, because as gross as it sounds, the BO is just bacteria farts. That's my nighttime routine. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my channel for more medical myth busting information and just about anything that has to do with your health. As always, stay happy and healthy.